Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up in the Word. So glad you could join me today. We're going to get right into Psalm 76 today. Oh, thank you so much for being diligent and getting through the Psalms with us. Psalm 76 is um, right there at what you would think is the midpoint of the Psalms because there are 150 of them, but not really, because remember when you get to Psalm 119, it is the single largest psalm chapter in the Bible. It'll take us a while to get through that one, because it's just full of wonderful nuggets of truth. But Psalm 76 is one that fits together in the Psalms of Asaph that really lines up uh, again, like books on a shelf to celebrate a great time of victory from what looked like it was going to be a terrible defeat. It's looking toward that time when the Assyrians invaded and surrounded Jerusalem, put it under siege during Hezekiah's day, and yet they were totally and soundly defeated, not by the armies of Israel, but by the uh, very hand of God and the angel of God. And so in Reflecting upon that victory, we have Psalm 76. Psalm 76. It says, In Judah God is known. His name is great in Israel. His tent is in Salem. Now the word Salem means peace. You might remember that the word Jerusalem is the city of Jerusalem, the city of God, Jerusalem, and that's what it comes from. So it's interesting that the apple of God's eye, the very city that is the center of the earth, the one that God says will be the cup of trembling before Jesus returns in the end times, is the city of peace. No wonder the Prince of Peace will come one day to rule from the city of peace, from Jerusalem. It says his tent is in Salem, his dwelling place in Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows, the shields and the swords and the weapons of war. Again, prophetic in that there he broke the weapons of war that belonged to the Assyrians. And one day, the Bible tells us that he'll, we'll beat all the spears and weapons of war into what plowshares and pruning hooks that we will put away our weapons of war and not learn war anymore. Again, prophetic in every respect in this psalm. So it says, here's what God did. He broke the flashing arrows, the shields, the swords, and the weapons of war. You are resplendent with light, more majestic than mountains rich with game. Valiant men lie plundered. They sleep their last sleep. Not one of the warriors can lift his hands. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both horse and chariot lie still. You alone are to be feared. Who can stand before you when you are angry? From heaven you pronounce judgment, and the land feared and was quiet. When you, O God, rose up to judge, to save all the afflicted of the land. Surely your wrath against men brings you praise, and the survivors of your wrath are restrained. Make vows to the Lord your God and fulfill them. Let all the neighboring lands bring gifts to the one to be feared. He breaks the spirit of rulers. He is feared by the kings of the earth. Beautiful psalm that just celebrates the victory after the Assyrian siege was broken. but also reminds us that the conflict continues and it goes on as it does even to this day. Make sure that you're on the side of the one, the God of Jacob, the one who will rise up to judge one day. Make sure you're on the side of the right and the righteous, even if that means at times surrendering your own will, your own rights, sometimes even your own life. History is sprinkled with martyrs, and we're getting more of them each and every day. Even as I'm putting together this devotional for today, I'm reminded of here recently so many martyrs have given their life for the cause of Christ around the world. Most recently, some in, in Nigeria, some in Ethiopia, in other parts of the world, who because of their testimony, their faith in Christ, have given their lives. Listen, you've not died in vain, my friends. One day, the great judge of all the earth will make all those things right. 
You know, it reminds me of a story I heard not too long ago and I wanted to reread for you today. Bob Pierce, the founder of World Vision, told the story of a Korean pastor whose village had been overrun by communists. They were determined to stamp out all profession of Christ, obviously in the days of the early part of the Korean War. The pastor was arrested and then incessantly brainwashed. At last, when they thought they had broken him, his tormentors issued their ultimatum, death or a public repudiation of his faith before the whole local community. The pastor agreed to stand as required before his flock and the village and make his confession. Well, the people came from far and near, rounded up by the communists, to hear this man deny his God and blaspheme the name of his Lord. The congregation huddled together, tearfully anticipating the worst, making excuses for their beloved shepherd. The guards stood by with their weapons. The pastor, feeble from his suffering and arrayed in rags, appeared and mounted the platform. He looked at the guards who gestured to him threateningly with their weapons to get on with his public denial of Christ. For many years, he said, I was your pastor. I labored among you teaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I taught you to repent of your sins, to put your faith in Jesus as God's Son and your Savior. I taught you to believe the Bible and to live clean, pure lives. Then the communists came, and they have taught me that I was mistaken. They have taught me that the Bible is a book filled with lies and mistakes, that Jesus is not the Son of God, and the right way to change society is by revolution, by listening to Karl Marx and Lenin. They have taught me that the church is an instrument of Ameri American imperialism and that I have been duped into serving foreign interests. I am here today by courtesy of the party to tell you these things. My lessons have been long and thorough. The pastor paused and looked about him at the soldiers impatiently gesturing him to get on with it and at his little flock hanging their heads in shame at the villagers gazing before him. And then he lifted his voice and said this, And I want you to know that it is all gloriously true. Jesus is the Son of God. He did die for your sins and for those of my communist guards. He is mighty to save all those who... And then his words were drowned out in the thunder of firearms, cut short as bullets tore through his body. That brave pastor had taken his stand, fearing God far more than man. You know what's interesting? Of all the nations of the earth we look at today, few have stronger churches and believers in the Lord Jesus Christ than those that you will find in South Korea. And yet in North Korea, where poverty and anguish and death and destruction seem to linger, many of those still hang on to a faith that they know exists somewhere even though they are not allowed to speak about it, talk about it, or hear from the other side. It's amazing, my friend. The battle goes on. And there are parallels, not unlike the one between North and South Korea, that are drawn in everyday life. There are lines drawn in the sand. And you may have faced some of those where you were told you really can't work at this company with beliefs like that. You may have been told as uh, some nominated for a particular office to serve our country were told by antagonistic, uh, an antagonistic senator in particular that I'm thinking about that because of your Christian faith in this testimony, you are not fit to serve our country. People draw those lines all the time. My friend, I want to encourage you to do something that I'm, I, I say I'm willing to do, and I hope I don't fall at my time of testing the way this pastor did not, and he stood for the Lord right until the end. I want to encourage you to stand on the right side of the parallel. Stand on the Lord's side if it means losing a job, if it means losing friends, even if it means standing in an uncomfortable and maybe an unsafe position and place. God rewards and takes care of those who fight for Him until the end. 
Well, you have a great day in the Lord. I hope and trust we're still in a free nation where we can talk about this stuff tomorrow as, again, we wake up in the Word. God bless you. I'll see you again.